It's one of the most exciting plays in baseball, the stolen base. Somehow you manage to make it to first base, and the next thing the opposing team knows, you're in scoring position. Another exciting play in baseball is catching the guy stealing a base. Catchers love nailing a runner, trying to steal about as much as they love making that diving catch on a foul ball. In this video, I will show you how to steal a base in Little League with very little chance of getting caught. In Little League Baseball, the base runners are not permitted to have a leadoff when on a base. This helps the youth pitchers focus on the pitch without the worry of base runner stealing. Since pitching is such an important yet difficult part of a game of baseball, it's a good idea to give young pitchers all the help that they need to throw strikes. But this does not mean base runners cannot steal. Once the ball reaches home plate, the runner is free to advance at risk of being put out. Most of the time, when we think of stealing in Little League, it occurs as soon as the ball passes home plate and a runner attempts to beat out the throw of the catcher. Sometimes they do, but a good catcher will throw out a lot of those steal attempts. Of course, there is always the wild pitch in the pass ball, but that steal doesn't require skill. Even the slowest runner on the team can beat out that throw to second. The question that most players, and even coaches, don't ask is, when may I no longer steal? In other words, at what point am I forced to stay on the base until the ball reaches home plate again? We know when you can start to run, but when is that opportunity lost? The rule that governs this is 7.13 in the rule book, and the rule begins by saying, when the pitcher is in contact with the pitcher's plate and in possession of the ball, and the catcher is in the catcher's box ready to receive delivery of the ball, base runners shall not leave their bases until the ball has been delivered and has reached the batter. The easy part of this rule is that the pitcher has to have the ball and be in contact with the pitcher's plate, not on the dirt area surrounding the pitcher's plate, but in contact with the actual plate. The more difficult part of the rule to judge is when the catcher is ready to receive the ball. At the highest levels of Little League play, the regionals and the World Series games, umpires have held a very narrow definition of when the catcher is ready to receive, so much so that the pitcher needs to be in the pitcher's stance ready to pitch. In the lower levels of play, the umpire's judgment of this rule may be far more loose, but the only real threat is that you have to return back to the base that you left, or if there was a hit, you may not advance as far as you could have. You are never called out for leaving early. Now that we understand the rules guiding the steal, let's look at some examples of when this would work with almost no chance of being caught. This first example is a more classic steal on the throwback to the pitcher. The runner on second has had plenty of opportunity to watch the catcher's pattern in throwing the ball back to the pitcher. Once he decides he's going to make the steal, he simply needs to create the largest leap possible and go the moment the ball is released by the catcher. In this example, the pitcher doesn't even have time to make a throw. The stolen base was a guarantee, and now a pass ball or wild pitch is going to score a run. The next example has two runners on base, one on first and one on third. Again, a classic stolen base scenario, but at this Little League World Series regional level, it normally is very difficult to pull it off. The runner on first takes off, hoping to entice a throw that allows then the runner on third to steal home. For the defense, the priority is to not permit the run to score. With one out, the offense can afford to give up and out if they get a run in exchange. This stolen base requires two smart base runners who are alert and able to make up their own minds. You see the runner on first, realizing he can't make it safely, retreats back to first. The runner on third, recognizing the bad throw, commits to going forward, and once he commits, he never looks back. In this third example, the runner on first is afforded an opportunity to make a delayed steal. The catcher and pitcher are set in a routine, and that does not allow them to be alert to that stolen base. Each time the pitcher has the ball, he is completely ignoring the runner. In this scenario, the runner thinks it is ball four and starts to jog to second base, only realizing the mistake halfway there. Had the pitcher been paying attention, he would have gotten this out for sure. Taking advantage of a distracted pitcher, 
can help get a runner into scoring position. Now in the third inning, this same pitcher has a runner on first again, but now, as you can see, he is very alert. Finally, we come to the two videos that demonstrate our favorite Little League steal. Here, the runner takes off after the pitcher has the ball with his back to him. And the same Texas team does it again at the Williamsport games with similar success. In both cases, the umpires allowed the steal to stand. Notice the pitcher in this second stolen base attempt. He is certainly on the pitcher's plate when the, with the ball, but the catcher is ruled to not be ready to receive. In the comment section below, tell us about your successes, or failures, in attempting the delayed steal. Were you safe? Did the umpires let the steal stand? We'd love to hear from you.